All right, so season two, episode 11. John was supposed to have the topic. Brandon ended up coming in with a roundabout topic that was on top of the fact that we had just driven for like four days. It was a whole thing. These things play in a large way. This is not a style thing. Um, you know what, just strap in. It's a wild ride all around. Uh, we talk about turn-ons and turn-offs. We talk about fathers. We talk about dogs. So yeah, there's enough reason to watch it right there. Um, yeah, it's a good one, and I'm very thankful for this. Enjoy. Stubbornness can be uh, can work in your in your favor at, in moments, right? In these moments of no, fuck this, I'm gonna get this trailer unloaded. That's a brain in the mood. I'm kind of chilling. I'm I'm so excited. I got my my uh, overalls right here. I was gonna wear them, and then I was like, you need to let that go. You need to you need to. <laughs> This moment, <laughs> like, you've been wearing them for days, and they've become like I just keep my phone right here, keep my wallet right here, I got the keys. I got my, I got like everything, my knife and like everything situated. Just place. Yeah, yeah. So I've been kind of like moving and shaking, and just when I wake up in the morning, I put my hoodie on, put them on, and throw the boots on, and go get in the car. And it's uh, I don't know. I feel like you have a gun. I'm your you have daily a gun hug on me. Not currently on you. Well, maybe currently on you. No, yeah, no, I don't have one on me at the moment. Like, sitting. it looked like you're reaching for one just now. It looked like you were like, <laughs> yeah. of, this one? of course I do. Of course I don't have a gun. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, 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 a few. Um, a safe trip. Once yeah. Everything was, it was everything was fine. The, uh, the the drive on Monday was gnarly. So Friday, I, I went to the gym and I uh, here in our building and I came back. I walked in the door and and just like, okay, okay, I got, we gotta we we gotta go to New Hampshire and get our stuff. And I was like, great, okay, cool, sounds good. And then uh, she goes, I think we gotta leave tomorrow morning. And I was like, all right, cool. And I just walked away and I was like, this is great. It sounds awesome. I love road tripping with her. Like that's my favorite thing in the world. So she was freaking out though. Cause she was like, we're going to drive up there. We got to be back here by Tuesday night. What are we going to do? I don't know what we're going to do. I was like, we're going to get in the car. I'm going to learn to tow a trailer. Cause I have never towed a trailer. Um, and so we spent the first, you know, 1100 miles driving up there with it empty and me learning how to tow it and back it up and park and I mean just everything associated with it and then uh we filled it up with stuff and the next morning woke up to a polar vortex and a nor'easter having a baby on I-95 where we're just going 30 miles an hour across there's not it was coming down so hard <laughs> Actually, like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Wow. I'm so sorry. You're so right sorry. ahead of you. And I, yeah, I, I drove about seven hours worth of driving over the course of a 12 and a half hour drive. Like, it was, it was gnarly. Like, this is amazing. Yeah, man, this is a, so good. It was a trip. It's an adventure. It's oh, an adventure, God. man. How did how did Ange fare? Like how did she fare with all? Because it sounds like it it could have caused a lot of anxiety, right? You have all these these factors. You've got the snow. You've got the. She's good. Nothing. She was she was like on her computer most of the time, and every once in a while I'd be like, "Holy shit!" And she go, "Huh?" She just doesn't. She I I asked her one time like, "Why do you do that?" why do you and then i said it and i heard it and i went why do you trust me that much and she was mm -hmm. like, i don't know like i don't know you you're supposed to do this <laughs> i was like okay she's she's not wrong like i'm the one in the driver's yeah. seat i can do anything by yelling and worrying about it so she kept just turning to me every once in a while like we did have one one little squirrel that I got, I got a little worried about 
I got a little worried about the jackknife um, at one particular point where we suddenly realized that the lane we were in was not the lane of the interstate we needed to be in. And I had just enough time to get over there that I hit a snow embankment of like two feet and just roared through it. And at that point, the trailer got a little bit swishy. So I was, I was, I was like, I was like playing cars in my head. I was like, steer into it, just lean into it a little bit, start her back. And I kept talking to the trailer the whole time. I literally, cause, cause when we first started towing, I said, she said, what does it feel like? I said, it feels like I'm really thankful that I'm a dancer because it's, it's literally just it's a groove. A it's a, yeah. You got to find. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's cool. Like if we get, if we yeah. get wild here, I can pull it back. And so I kept just going, bless you. I kept just going, Hey, 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 come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby girl. We got this. We got this. We're going to be all right. Come on back to me. Like it <laughs> just, it was a trip. It was a beautiful memory. I am so thankful for it. And then today I woke up and uh, we had a bunch of stuff to do separately, business stuff. And um, I was like, uh, I got to get rid of this fucking trailer because I don't know where to park it anymore. So let's unload it. She was like, well, we only have like an hour and a half. Threw on the car hearts and was like, I've got this. <laughs> and I was like, Shut up. up. I must have climbed 80 flights of stairs today, just being like, I'm not taking the elevator because I don't have time. And I would just haul and stuff up. So we, you know, got everything together and got our work done. It's nice. You to emptied her out? Say what? You emptied her out? Got everything done, man. Eight by 12 trailer, completely full, completely empty wow. in an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah, it was a it was a good day. It's amazing what we do when we're like really. It's when stubbornness can be. And I actually have a I have a sidebar uh, question here. <laughs> stubbornness can be uh, can work in your in your favor at, in moments, right? In these moments of no fuck this, I'm gonna get this trailer unloaded. That's a brain in the move. I would be so stubborn if I had no other man with me. I'd move a master bed. Uh, or excuse me, like a king size bed with a frame and a TV and the TV stand all by myself. Yeah. Like if I had to, in a refrigerator, if I had to. If I had a dolly, I, need, I would need a dolly for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, mean, I, I can't pick it up right now, but there's a hand truck right here. Like we travel with one. Yeah. So so it's Mark. in those moments where it's like, you're, you're, you'd rather, I don't know if she helped you or not, but I'm, in the, I'm one of those people who I'd like, I'd rather you just be out of my way so that I can get it done than for you to be like, but what, what do you want me to grab? What do you want me to do? And it's like nothing because in my head, I already have a plan. Um, so my sidebar is it also, stubbornness can be a turnoff for me. And I would love to have like a little quick moment to have what we would call like a sub like, let's have a subtopic tonight that I, I was dying to talk about, but it kind of went there naturally. And then we'll dive into John's thing. Um, what are three major turnoffs for you romantically? And what are three turn-ons for you? Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm, that's right. I've been married for a long time, man. A three? I don't know. Three. <laughs> <laughs> three. I mean, John, you haven't talked yet. You got you got to talk. I'm trying to think. Uh, starting with three unattractive traits, okay. right? Turn off. It's not even unattractive. Just a turn off. Like when it happens, turn you're off. like, nope. He's not in business. We're not here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think one is cleanliness. Cleaning in the sense that they don't have their independence in doing their own thing. Like <laughs> I, I know I like have like my. I was like, yeah, yeah, like, I agree. <laughs> Someone who just it makes me all about their life because it's like, I know I want my personal time. I want to be able to work on my projects and not in the back of my mind being like, I need to hurry up because she's waiting for me because she has nothing to do. Mm. So that's like a huge thing. And I've been in that situation because I used to think, oh, that's great. She'll be waiting. Well, uh, when I'm ready, I'll come back. And it's like, no, didn't work for me. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say that's definitely one. Um, 
I love growth. So it's like someone who's not open to growth or at least having the conversation, being able to have, actually, you know what? Let me lean that over to communication. Someone who doesn't know, want to communicate about stuff. If something's mm -hmm. bothering you, like, let's talk about it. Like, I would rather know what, what's bothering you so we don't repeat this down the road. Or like, if something's bothering me, like, I want to get this out now because I would rather not fester with this. So not mm -hmm. being able to communicate something is a huge, and then usually early on, you can kind of tell when something does kind of bother how a person reacts about it. Um, I want to, I'm going to have to ponder on the third one. Some big takeaways is uh, like acts of service, as I know is one of my big love languages. And it's not like they have to do stuff for me, but just small, like showing that they care. Oh, I, 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 I caught that you like oh, oat milk in your coffee. Here's a coffee. Yeah. I picked you up one. And it's like the small, like little things like that, like that's a huge, huge uh, plus. Mm -hmm. um, I can jump on that one about communication that you yeah. said. Because there's the, the first part of love episode, uh, what part of love episode was about that, but in a very specific style to our dynamic and our relationship, which is if you're not willing to fight for, for what you believe in, nah, I'm, I'm out. I'm not interested mm -hmm. in that. That's not a big thing. And, and, and that, that's something that I think even kind of still, um, continues for us today to a degree of when we have conversations, which is all day, every day, if sometimes one of us will say something and the other one will be like, well, what, like, why do you feel that way? And you'll say it and you're like, nah, I guess I don't. And you kind of shy away and you're like, well, do you or don't you? Like, mean what you say, say what you mean, and then stand behind those words, like put some weight into it. So someone who's not willing to put weight into their uh, words, put action behind their words, um, I'd say that that probably is the biggest turnoff for me. You know, the biggest turnoff for me is when your words and your actions don't match. Like it's just, and, and I would venture to say, uh, venture a guess that that's probably because that was something that I did for a long time. My words were <clears throat> poetic prose at best and meaningless garbage at worst and my actions showed exactly what i genuinely felt um and that acknowledging that issue in myself is something that let me look outward and go oh no 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 I, I don't like, that's something I dislike about myself so, so, so much. I don't want to have anything to do with anybody who does that. And so, uh, turn offs, I'm sure you're talking specifically relationships and sexually, but that's, that's yeah, yeah. any relationship that I have with anybody has pretty similar qualities in that regard. Like I'm not, I'm just. Andrew's my best friend kind of acro across the board, not kind of. She's my best friend across the board. I just happen to also get to have sex with her. Like that's like, that's, that's the <laughs> difference between like, like the person I want to spend the rest of my life with and my best friend. That, yeah. There's probably, mm -hmm. this is lost in transition. <laughs> but I think everybody can make your jokes down in the comments below. <laughs> I think one of the things you mentioned before, I, I was talking about this probably two weeks ago, because um, I got to argue with someone and there's a friend of mine that I was like, look, I only get in fights or, or arguments with people I care about. Like I got, I'm at an age, or I've, as I've gotten older, I realized like, I don't fight with or get in arguments with people I don't give a shit about. Cause like, yeah. if I win, like, what does it matter? I don't like, you mean this, no offense to the person, but like, you mean nothing to me right now. So I'm not gonna waste my time trying to prove a point with you. But if it's someone I care about and I, they, they got confused because they're like, what do you mean you'd like to fight? I'm like, no, it's not that I want to fight. But if the, if the conversation has turned into a fight, I'm willing to go and have that fight because I'm willing to fight for this relationship, mm -hmm. fight for this person for us to grow. So one, this doesn't happen again, but two, so we can understand each other better. 
So I'm willing to deal with fighting. I'm not, I'm okay with it, but it's, I won't waste my time on someone. I, I always think about like in a football game, it's like, you see those people who get drunk and they start fighting with each other. And I remember being at football games or a sport game and seeing that go down. I'm like, I just want to come enjoy the game. Cause even if I win, if I get an argument with someone and I win, like what is, what is, what, what does that do? <laughs> like this is ego right there. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Brandon? Turn offs. Oh man. One, someone who's, who, who like, and I was talking about this the other day. This is why it's so relevant in my head. Cause I've been, I've been dating my ass off recently. The, 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 the runnings for Mrs. Alexander have, have definitely been going. <laughs> I mean, this is the year guys. I'm saying it right here, right now in the refinery. This is the year. I don't know who she is. I don't know where she's at. We're going to meet, we're going to date. And we'll, then we're all to get married this year. But, um, I just, I, I've been looking at my turn offs. I'm like, um, I want to, I want to say, John, I agree with you with, it's not necessarily clinginess. It's just like, they don't really have anything going on in their world. So your world is their world now. Mm-hmm. It's like, whatever you're doing is the it. And I'm someone who's yeah. turned on by like, oh, you got something going on? Yeah. What you got going on? What you doing? Yeah. Oh, you out here doing shit? Okay. You living in purpose? Okay. You know, you know who you are? Okay. You healing? Okay. You doing yoga? Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Uh-huh. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Right there, Jake. That's it. Right there, Jake. That's the one. Huh? So anyway, that's what I like. But when you don't have that, because you're so you're either unsure or uncertain, you're I, it's a turnoff for me. The other one is a, a, like a lack of humility, mm-hmm. like being a know-it-all, or like not being willing to be like I don't know. But in front of people, you're like, <laughs> of course. Like, how did you not know that? And I'm like, for real? Are we really doing this right now? This is not hot. This is not sexy. And this is not getting you any sex later. Like I'm the one with the control, not the one with the control. Cause I, I feel like I'll get ate up in the right. comments and the things later, but I'm, you know, I'm deciding like, it- <laughs> like no, don't do it. That's fine. What, what is it? I'll edit this part. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll well, what's the timestamp on this? But, but no, like seriously, like in those situations, if, if I'm turned off and they're like, so what are we doing later? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing nothing. I'm going home to read a book. That's what I'm doing. And you know, so it's that. So um, the clinginess, but then the lack of humility. And I, I think the third thing um, for me would be, you know, someone who's just like, like afraid to explore, like ex- ex- sexually speaking, like they're, they're afraid to go outside of their like one, two, three, A, B, C, red, white, and blue. Like, this is all I do. Like, all I do is missionary. All I do is this. There's no sex in random places. There's no talk to fantasies. There's no, like, anyone who's like, I'm like, what is happening? No, run. So, <laughs> not run. <laughs> Listen, wait a minute. That is for somebody. Yeah. It just ain't for me. There's nothing wrong with it. If you like, in, this, in, the, in the sex world, it's called vanilla. I'm a I'm a 99% vanilla, by the way. What is that? I said if 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 both people, you're absolutely right. If both people yeah. are into by the books, by the numbers. If you just want to be here. Lines, if you just want to be missionary, that's it. That's fine. That's completely fine. I think it, 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 I feel oh, like this is 69. This is 69. Sorry, this is, I can't do, how'd you do that? My what? arms aren't that flexible. What'd you just do? How'd you do that, Cole? You did you do this? this? Yeah, but he did it this yeah, way, but he did it sideways. Right. Yeah, I I can't do that. My pecs are- Because your pecs, because you're so I swear to God, Cole, look at me squeezing and trying to turn. I see, I see somebody- Cole's reaction to that. <laughs> to do some of that yoga that they're, that they're talking about. <laughs> Wanting their their lady to do maybe somebody else should be doing a downward dog. Hmm. hmm? Wait, what? Mm-hmm. No, oh, no. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> you want to be experimental? Come on now. Tonight you're with the one in town. We're dog. Huh? Fuck it. Shivasana. <laughs> Shivasana. Namaste. No, I'll add my uh, third. <laughs> day, you said humility. I think it's also, um, and the word is slipping. What is the actual term for this? But how people treat other people, like treating other people with respect. I think it's as simple as that, like being yeah. in a restaurant or at a hotel, or being the hotel uh, the bell keeper or bellman, anything like that. Like service people. Yeah. You know, with someone, and they don't know how to treat service people right. Like that's also a big turnoff. Yeah. I, I would say integrity. I mean, integrity is the yeah. word that comes up for me when you say that integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Treating anybody with respect, regardless of what their standing is. I mean, one thing I absolutely love. Um, I. Uh, we always tend to head back to this to some degree. It's a men's roundtable discussion. But um, my my dad told me a story one time. He uh, he saw a guy sitting outside when he was walking in to get his cigarettes sitting outside the gas station <clears throat> wasn't asking for anything was just sitting there almost like clearly and he said uh, went on his side got his cigarettes came on out handed the guy a 20 dollar bill got in his work truck and the guy who was there working with him said why'd you give that guy fucking money what the fuck did you give that guy 20 dollars? you know he's gonna go spend it on fucking liquor you know Give a shit what he spends it on. Said he wouldn't bother nobody. He's very respectful. I thought shit, he could probably use a little bit of money. I gave it to him. After that, I'm not fucking responsible for it. I did my part. Mm -hmm. And I love, I always love that, that concept of I've I've dated people who have been rude to service people, and it's mm. a big contention in our relationship. It's a big part of us just button heads because we could be having a great night and then the waiter comes by or what have you and they're just hey hey and you're like mm, oh my god as you did it i'm turned <laughs> off i'm like Fuck. but by the time so in that particular relationship by the time i was at that when i when that happened we had already been dating for long enough to where i I didn't feel comfortable breaking up with her over it. But yeah. looking back, I really wish I would have. Because <laughs> it is. Yeah, but that was a trigger point. Yeah. That was where you saw a new side and you're like, oh. Fucking yeah. A. And it, it's, it's um, indicative of so many other things. There's so much more that goes into that decision. And I think that's, that's one of those things. It says so much more about a person. And I think that's the larger thing of what these turnoffs and, and turn ons that I, I hope we get to uh, are really about is what's behind them, right? Mm. What? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I will forever go back to this. Um, it's the what and why. It's the what bothers me. The why is the reason it bothers me. Like why mm -hmm. you are choosing to treat that person, why you think it's okay to snap. Okay, so I didn't know um, that this was uh, a thing, but I was on set at season one of This Close. And for those who don't know, This Close uh, is the first show written by, produced by, and starring two deaf actors, uh, Josh Feldman and Shoshana Stern. And I was really lucky to be a part of it. And we were in a scene where it doesn't even matter what was happening in the scene, but I was new to the deaf community. I had been signing for a while um, just because I had a director who had uh, Calhoun directed High School Musical, which was my first job out of college. He is a big director uh, of at Deaf West and, and he's, he's fluent in sign and his associate was fluent in sign, the associate director. And so when I was in High School Musical, one of the actors in the show had been in their production of Big River. And so he was also fluent in sign and they're in the back of the house and they're giving notes to this actor on stage. And he's just on stage going. Mm. 
and he's just sign. And I was like, what is that? I want to know what that is. So I learned sign. They teach me, they give me a book, the joy of signing classic book. I learn, I get cast in this show. I'm on set, but I don't know anything about deaf culture. And I trying to get Josh's attention instead of stomping my foot, I go, Hey, Hey, and everybody on set that knew anything about deaf culture went, no, 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 stop, stop. And I was like, what just, what just happened? And they were like, you don't snap at deaf, we love you. This is from love. You don't snap at deaf people ever. You don't do that because it's disrespectful. Look at what that looks like. I know what you're doing. You're just trying to get our, his attention, stomp. Just stomp your foot, draw attention that way. Do not ever snap. And I was like, oh shit. And so much of being on that show and being around that community and being enmeshed in that community was about paying attention to not just the what, but the why. Why was that the first thing that you did? And what does that look like? What is that perceived as? How is that interpreted? And I mean, that put why I, I was like, I even hate it if someone does that to a waiter. And I just did that to my friend, my lover in this show, my fucking, like the person who gave me this job, the person who gives me all of their heart every day on set. And I just fucking just thought this is the best way to do this because I wasn't thinking because I didn't do my due diligence. And I think that there's something there for people who don't think past that, you know, past the end of their own nose, as it were, in those moments and are just like, well, you're a waiter. Do you job? Like, I just need your attention. It's that mm. same. It just well, it's like a level, it's a level of they think they're above, above yeah. someone. Yeah. And obviously, that wasn't my intention. And I don't think it's always the people who uh, the, the turn off furs, turn off these doesn't matter. Um, I don't think that's always their intention to be like, I think they just think, well, they're a waiter. And you're like, Whoa, okay. So in that moment, what do you do? Do you just go, Oh, fuck this person. I'm not having sex with you ever. Or do you talk about it? Do you acknowledge it? Like, how do you how do you deal with those situations or does it just immediately become something that you're like nah nah no matter what the answer is nah no, sorry no, I, exactly what happened with you with, <clears throat> unintentional no, but i think i think exactly how that one person told you hey we love you but you don't do that like yeah. they may not know your intention of why doing it and they from a place curiosity not shutting you down they're letting you correct in the moment but I'm sure afterwards they explain because they know you do care. And like, I come mm -hmm. from the service industry. I worked as a server um, in the industry for a while. And so I always come from that point of view. Like I have no problem bringing it up to someone real quick. I'm like, yo, yo, yo why, why do you think that attitude or that way of talking to someone, what's the purpose? Cause you really quick with how they respond, you can tell if they think they're above that person. Oh, this is, I am, I'm the, the guest. They're the worker. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, when you're working, I hope no one treats you like you're the worker. It's just like, yes, they're doing a job right now, but that doesn't make you better than them. And so I'm very quick on correcting that because I think it's something that does. But you can tell a person's personality just by how they treat other people. And like, I'm glad Bren mentioned integrity because I think my favorite things when I hear the word integrity is who are you when no one else is watching? It's like, how are you showing up to the world when, when no one else is going to witness you? And I remember reading this yeah. little, I don't know if you guys have heard of the grocery cart. Um, theory. So mm -hmm. the grocery cart theory is like the uh, litmus test for integrity, because there's no law, there's no rule, like you don't get in trouble if you don't return the shopping cart, like you can leave the shopping cart in the middle of the parking lot. No anywhere. One's after you. anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. And no one's ever gonna come after you. But the courteous thing is to go not only to put it into where the carts are because it makes the, the employee's job easier, but also you're not leaving it somewhere where it could just start rolling and being in someone else's car. And like, there's a whole thing behind this. And if you ever have time looking at it, because it's a, it's a pretty long thing, but it's pretty genius on like 
by the end of end of reading it, you're just like, I'm always going to return my go- my grocery card. <laughs> like now I've realized 1, because because a good one part that I loved about it. Do you return the grocery cart when there's other customers in the parking lot and you might be seen not returning it? And do you do the exact same thing when there's no one in the parking lot? You have the same reaction in both situations. And that's really a way of asking yourself, do you literally, do you live by the integrity um, mm-hmm. where it's you with the world or is you when someone's watching you in the world? Q, come on somebody. Come on, somebody. Right, That's so good. Turn on. Go ahead. I'm, I'm intrigued to hear the turn on. Turn ons? Yeah. We oh, talk man. Turn-offs. So, massive turn on for me is someone who's light, who's like light about life. I'm heavy, baby. I'm heavy. <laughs> I'm deep. I have these conversations all the time. So, when someone can like, know that about me and get me out of my space, like invite me into lightness. And I can be like, okay, yay. And I'm just like doing life and frolicking and shit like a little pixie fairy. It's a turn on for me. Cause you helped me to get out of what I've created for myself, right? Like it's still a part of me, but the other part of me wants to play. So if you can get me out of that and 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 let me still be that when the moment calls for it right that's amazing so someone who's like light and knows how to have fun and like maybe like maybe do something i wouldn't normally do or you know can make me laugh like i'm really turned on by that um the second thing for me is someone who like really who who like owns their femininity and like womanhood and sexuality like i love a woman like i love a good steak like there's something about it that is savory that is like oh my god i can't wait to have that again like there's something about a woman who carries that and I, you may think i'm weird i correlate food and sex so it may be weird to some people but i really do i really i'm like How that damn that food she cooked was bomb now I, now i want to like i don't even damn. understand that could be weird genuinely don't I'm sure there's it's someone just, out there that's like, that's weird. Yeah. My relationship. I don't even eat <laughs> until after the refinery because I'm like, nah, no, nah, we need some time. I'm nope. Like, no. No, that's ridiculous. A good meal made by the woman that I'm into is an aphrodisiac, period, hands down. So that's number two. Um well, I guess that's two and three. I mean, if you can cook shit, that's a, definitely a turn on. Um, but no, so I've got, uh, you know, I've got someone who's lighthearted and someone who owns their, their sexuality and their femininity. And I think the third one is someone who can challenge me without trying to belittle me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like if you can challenge me in like a loving way, but not make it be like, oh my God, you're never going to change. Like, you're just going to always think the same way. Like, why don't you ever just see my side of it? Like, why won't you just agree with me? That's not, that's not challenging. That's like you trying to win. And this isn't about win or lose. This is about how do we, as you said, Colt, compete. How do we compete yeah. in this situation? So someone who can compete with me in a loving way, I am like fired up about. So those are my, those are my three turn-ons There's a- before, I get too, before I get too into it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you got pockets covering up. You're all right. Yeah. You can't Sam, even. Let me you just. Uh, Surprise! You can unbutton your own shirt. Because my fucking. Come on. I was gonna call it. Cool still on my soul comment. <laughs> um. All right. So, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Ballbusters USA. Oh, fucking on. ball busters on oh, discount. Thank you very much. 50% off on ball busting today. I appreciate it. It's on sale. <laughs> I got you. Um, so I got a couple of doors open. Um, one of them being the, I wonder if it is, and it's not, I, I, I wonder, uh, I guess I should just ask you, is it that you like 
and it was an offhanded comment, so I, I think I do know the answer to it, but yeah, you just find yourself sexually attracted to the concept of someone making you food and serving it to you and then whatever ensues as as that is or within the context of being served or is it sharing that experience that good food that whole thing with that person you find that how do i explain this it's almost for me and i i i'm embarrassed to once again go down the animated film route but Ratatouille, there, okay. there's an element to the way that he describes food that is sensual, that is sure. so beautiful because you pay attention to it. And, mm -hmm. and food is, in essence, the quickest version of this description of love that I keep giving and keep feeling and keep thinking about all the time. And I spend a lot of time thinking, obviously, about love, but about this definition of action over time like that's a very quick way to show somebody love to give somebody even a little bit of love mm. putting food putting the time into a meal is it's it's not easy it doesn't matter how easy that meal no. make it takes time yeah. You're wasting your time and what again what's the first thing that we talked about wasting time wasting other people's time mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. one of the most harmful things you can do. Like, I, I just don't. I I can't say I don't understand. I've done it, but now I I hope so much with every fiber of my being not to waste people's time. Yeah, that's that's the opposite of love, and I don't know what that is. Antipathy. I don't think it's hate. I don't know what it is, but so that was one thing that I wanted to to touch on the other one was uh your your first point um you said someone who's light by challenging mm -hmm. that what you actually want is someone who is equally as deep as you and has the ability mm -hmm. to traverse that depth yes in, in that's accurate within the necessity of your relationship yeah, like I want to be able to have this, but also what we have in our lightness, right? Like when we, like, I just called you a ball buster. We can laugh about it, <laughs> right? Whatever the case may be, that's light to me. But then also five minutes later, we go down a rabbit hole based off of one word. A hundred percent. And that and that conversation can go on for an hour and a half to two hours. And then we look up and we're like, shit, it's time to go to bed. So yes, you're right. It's depth with the ability to. I, I find it's harder for me because of um, the positions that I'm in in life to be the lighthearted one because I'm typically the thought driver, the thought leader, the listener, the, the facilitator of something, right? So I don't really have, there's not a lot of room for me to be something other than that in, unless it's in moments like this with you guys, like our group text, our group chat. So when I did have it and I did see, I saw what it felt like to be like, okay, I can go be those things I need to be for the world and everyone and, and, and having conversations and leading this and doing interviews. And then she being like, well, tonight we're going to do this. And I'm like, I don't have to think about it. I'm just good. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I like that. We're just gonna go for a walk in the neighborhood. That's fucking fantastic. That's actually fucking amazing. That's what is eternal for me. I get Because they can recognize and acknowledge those things and then say, you know what? So, yeah. And can I ask you if 2021 is the year that you are proposing it to yeah. me? Can I ask you, instead of looking for the just for the person who brings that light in and pulls you out into the childish, uh, and the yeah. good just did a thing about being childish. I love, I love, sure. that's my favorite fucking thing. Yeah. However, yeah. what I would challenge you to do is look in addition to that for the person who's also asking people to be deep and doing that, who's also provoking those conversations and because the lightness will run out. Yeah. The levity will run out. 
that 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 ability no no one person can carry two people correct it just doesn't i i i i defy anyone to to prove me wrong without burdening them unnecessarily mm. absolutely I, I agree with you. I stand with you in that. And I will, I will, I will be mindful of, of that. I just, I love you too much to see you not see that. And I know you would, but I challenge you to do that. In addition. I hear you. That's why I didn't, that's why I didn't rebuttal. Cause I was like, yeah. I hear your heart. So there's no need to rebuttal. You're totally right. It's right. like, yes. <laughs> John, well, I was gonna say, to your second one of them being in their in their uh, femininity, in yeah. their, I think that is a beautiful uh, other part because it allows the masculine side of us to come out. And I think going yeah. to your light point, I think that is what is the femininity is the lightness it is in the moment being like, hey, we're gonna go do this, but it's also it's that dance between the two of the masculine and the feminine. And then all times we all have masculine and feminine energy. But at the same time, to let, to let our feminine every once in a while, and she's having a crazy day, I and mean, she's been working a whole bunch for us to be like, hey, you know what? Let's go find horses right now. We're not gonna do, we're not, that's all we're gonna play right now. We're just gonna go ride some horses. And like that dance, because that I, person- I felt the same way. Right? <laughs> I felt like, the same way. Don't, put, the same don't way. put me on this motherfucker. I, <laughs> I took the no, fucking I think, balls off and put my boots on and was like, I, <laughs> I literally, I put on different, I, I, before I started this call, I was like, which pair of boots do I want to wear? Which fucking ones do I want to wear? I don't want to feel like, yeah. I want to be home. I'm going to put on my <laughs> fucking boots. I'm going to walk around in this house and feel fucking home. And I, I just love that you um, Oh, shit. Sorry, John. I did not mean to interrupt you like that. Please. Oh, you're good. You're good. Oh my gosh. No, it, it, that's, I mean, that was the main thing. I just love that you touched on that because I, it, that is actually a huge turn on is when someone can stand in their essence. Um, yes. It, in a relationship, I, 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 I was actually talking about this the other day about my favorite thing with a woman is, is one who wears a long dress, especially Oof. in a relationship. And it, a big part of it is because I remember, I mean, granted, no one against anyone who wears a two top and short shorts, like that's also very sexy. But when I'm dating someone, especially early on, when we're going on a date, unless we're going to the beach, there's very little mystery you're leaving. Like if we haven't had sex yet, there's very little mystery. You're, you've shown me 80% of your body basically. And when you can wear a long dress and all I know is your curves, the amount of mystery that's left is phenomenal. And it's such a huge turn on and like being able to embrace their body, embrace their humor, embrace their smile what they think to really own who they are not to say that they have to be perfect and 100 like be sure of themselves so, like we all have our ups and downs but someone who loves who can dance with themselves who can have fun with life and i think that's going to brennan's uh point about being light like someone who doesn't take life so seriously and you know, like has to be this way has to like a controller almost has to control every situation and they can let go of control and i love spon spontaneity i'm Sagittarius, and that's probably like from all the quotes or things that they say about Sagittarius, the one that like always I'm like, all right, cool, I can agree with that one. Is someone can call me tonight and be like, yo, you want to fly out and go do this adventure? And I'm most likely to say yes. Um, I'm always down for an adventure. So finding someone who's down with that kind of mentality, and like to Brandon's point, like if I had a stressful week, she's like, yo, why don't we, why don't we right now, let's get in the car and let's drive up to Ojai. Let's stay in Ojai. Like, oh, that is like, Ooh. let me start looking for rings really quick. Where's the, <laughs> where <are these? laughs> oh, man. so within what you just said, what I, I, I totally understand all of the things that you said. I, I'm so happy that I get to be the unintentional challenger and I get to be Brandon tonight. This is so exciting. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> must be the new digs um <laughs> it's actually probably the the work the farmer it's um, the work. Yeah. <laughs> exactly um 
So Angelina, uh, especially at 24, did not own a long dress. She, she mostly wore sweaters that she just pulled down just enough and wore a belt around them and called them dresses. Like they- Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, it it's the best. And I still love it when she- <laughs> Now, now this is this is this is my point though. I think what I loved so much about it was that whether she wore a long dress or whether she wore just just enough, like to rehearsals, she'd come in in a literal bra and like booty shorts or jazz pants, and I, I was, I, I'm. I'm blushing thinking about it, thinking about our first rehearsal together because, oh my God, that said, I spent six months having felt her body, having had her literally pull me into her and be like, why are you, hump me, what are you doing? Do, do the fucking dance, like, what are you doing? Do it right, that's not, do it, and like, and still not knowing. Mm. And then there was something really special that happened. And this is probably too much information, but I don't know, it's 2021 and it's the internet. So um, I remember the first time we had sex and you, you know, the grocery cart litmus test is very important, but the how you feel after sex litmus test, that's real different. And that's real telling for me. Um, and as soon as we were done, I just wanted everything with her. I wanted more, I wanted to explore more. I wanted to know more. And that has never changed. And that was a great litmus test for me because we all know um, that huh, the, the joke has to start from some sort of truth. Like the, yeah. the face yeah. the minute it's over, you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh no. Oh. Uh, there's a reason there's a term called half night stand. Um, because oh. at the end of that, you're like, nah, I'm going home. You're going home. Someone's going home. I will go to your home. Some... You can go to my home. I don't even care. I don't want to be here right now. And there's there was something profound in this feeling of to me, and this is just a personal thing, but to me, um, her femininity and her sexuality intertwined in her independence with how she dressed. She very consistently said, I mean, she, she, it was, it was all guessed by Marciano. It, it was all bandeau dresses. It was all like two pieces. It was all the Kardashians but smaller, like a thing that was not doctor produced. It was all her and her owning that, her having that, um, it's not just independence. It's, there was, a, there was a level of ego that I was attracted to. I was super attracted to that. Now she would also, constantly be like, uh, I don't fucking know what, who the fuck cares? What like, and there was some of that that yeah. I massage a little bit and be like, ah, uh, for me personally, I don't like you to know <laughs> why not this. <laughs> there were a million things. Lest, lest we, you know, press this about women or relationship or whatever it be. Um, yeah, I was a fucking like knuckle dragging idiot when I met her. 
I, mm. I said things to impress her. I put on just a little bit of a New England accent every once in a while, just to like get close to like, I, I just, I was an idiot. So let, I just want to make sure that I'm not over here being like, I was a pristine diamond, but she was a lump of coal. Like that's not what's going on here. Um, but within the conversation, turn ons and turn offs, like I love that she never wore a fucking long dress. And I remember the first time that she did though, and I'll say this, the first time that she did years into our relationship, I was like, what? And we all know, mm -hmm. anybody who knows Angelina knows that Angelina is synonymous with hair. She has fucking, she's like a lion's mane. Uh, it's, it's, it's insane how much hair she has and how big it gets and the wide angle fucking lens that I have to buy to fit her hair and me into a frame. I'm part of love. However, one of my favorite ways to see her is with her hair pulled back into a low ponytail and she will not do it. She will almost never do it. I have to like beg her to do it. Yeah. She just, she's like, I don't, and she has her own reasons for that, which are not for me to share, but she won't do that. She wears her hair. She identifies with that. But I remember the mm -hmm. first time I saw her in that low pony and I was like, oh, oh shit. <clears throat> and there's something about that. But I like the concept of, she fucking, she surprises me all the time, dude. That's a turn on. That's what this whole long, long diatribe that I apologize. It was supposed to be like a, it was supposed to be a little short, like <laughs> dive off point. So John, John, please accept my apology. No, oh, all good. Fully, yeah, dude, like fully. I don't know what the topic is for tonight, but I'll tell you what, I love it. Whatever it is, love it. No, we, we touch on so many amazing points with it. What I will say is that I love it. Damn it. I'll find it. No, no, no. You love that she surprises you all the time. Yeah, I'd say that's my biggest. That's what you were going with. I'd say that's yeah. my biggest. My biggest turn on is being surprised and people realizing that that is not something that runs out. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is no ellipses. That's a period. That that it doesn't run out. You choose to let it run out when you stop doing new things for yourself, when you stop growing and you stop maturing and you stop changing, how the fuck do you think your relationship is supposed to keep growing? Like what, mm -hmm. what do you expect? You both have to do that. You both have to do that. And sometimes it's gonna happen at different paces. You know, your circle is not always gonna be 50-50. We talked about this before, like, but, yeah. Okay. I'm done. For the moment. For the moment. <laughs> God, I fucking love y'all. Ah. Fucking. What else you got, Gorski? What else you got? No, build off this topic. I love that we went into this because I we tapped into so many of what we personally like, but I think it dives into deeper, deeper uh, elements. Like, I mean, we talked about. I like how the person to see how a person treats the server, but in reality, we're talking about the person's integrity. Yeah. Like, I may talk about the person, how they, sh they look in a dress, but in reality, we're talking about the confidence and how they show up in themselves. Yeah. And like, it's beautiful that we can talk about what you guys are turn offs and turn ons are. Uh, in reality, we're talking about what we like about people and you know, in, in specifically in a relationship. But how beautiful yeah. to see these elements and see that's what i love about all these conversations we just throw something in, into the circle and see where it goes and usually we're able to just hit so many beautiful moments and it's like it makes me appreciate and it's one thing when it comes to dating that a friend um threw at me which uh, brandon you're dating as well so it throws out a lot of times people think about what are the deal breakers what are your five deal breakers or three deal mm -hmm. breakers are you see it and not going to happen and a friend challenged me, what are your five deal makers? When you find someone who hits all five, forget what the deal breakers are. Because a lot of times deal makers tie in the deal breaking part. 
But once you see them have those deal makers, that's a bonus. Like, this is like, when you see all those things, these are the things I would love to have in a partner. This is when we're focusing on what we do want, not focusing on what we don't want. So when we're mm-hmm. focusing on what we do want, we can create that, but at the same time, being able to, when we find those people and see that and have that experience and like, wow, this exists. And we can share these moments. Like, it's kind of like, Cole, you, you've been together 11 years? 11 years. Yeah. You just bigger little yeah so 11 years and you're still being surprised and i think that's what makes a beautiful relationship is when you stay curious about it the other person like the whole idea of which is like you're it's a never-ending journey of enjoying each other and learning from each other and both of us will continue to grow and you're both will mm-hmm. continue to grow as you get older and that's where more of the learning of each other comes i think that's the beautiful journey of us brandon and myself who were like dating now and like finding that person like that being being able to sit in a room on a weekly basis and talk to someone who's 11 years in on a relationship and be like cool <laughs> like having someone the wisdom of someone who's 11 years in while we're in the beginning stages like how beautiful is to have that cheat code some would say cheat code that's it x x y y r1 l2 <laughs> that's it that's it but no, so what, what triggered this is, and it's interesting all the time for me because it's coming up on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And oh la- this, huh? I just said, oh my God, yes, it is. Sorry. He yeah. didn't remember Valentine's Day is coming up in that moment. No, yeah. well, I will keep that door open. I'll tell you why in a second. Brandon. Yeah. So, so uh, I was on a, I was, dating someone last year that wasn't the girl I was talking about previously because we were on a little break break ski and I was like man fuck this shit. I'm gonna go date somebody else so I met this girl through a mutual friend I hit him up and I was like yo who's that and he was like oh that's so and so I was like put me in he's like I got you send her a text she sends me a text I send her one back I said let's meet up we meet up and it's a great meetup that's a great meetup Meet up turns a phone call. Phone calls okay-ish, kind of uh, whatever. She's super religious, super traditional, but then her extremism went from uh, super conservative to just super open and sexual, like literally in a matter of minutes. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. Things aren't adding up right now. No, they do. But hey, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Just saying. That bell goes off. I'm just say. <laughs> <laughs> it went it went it went from I haven't had sex in like six years to all of a sudden like I was building something in my garage and she's like, Are you good with your hands? And I was like, Yeah, I build stuff often. She's like, Oh my god, I'm so turned on. And I was like, wait, what? How wait, how did we get here? How did we get from me building something with to you turned on? I don't you understand. Just... <sighs> oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna mute myself. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He did. He actually muted himself. But no. So so fast forward to um, one of the things she kept doing on the phone with me, is she kept calling me Mr. New Age Gents. And I was like, yo, so yeah, your face was my whole inside. I was like, mm, can you not call me that? Like, I'm Brandon. I get that you love what I do with my platform, but like, I'm not Mr. New Age Gents, because you're setting up this expectation and you're putting this pedestal here that I, the person, will never reach. I'm always going to fall short of it because I'm a man, because I'm a person. The, I, what I promote is an idea. What I promote is a lifestyle and values and, and things of that to strive for. But if you're calling me Mr. New Age Gents, I feel like you're not really looking to meet Brandon because Brandon may actually be disappointing to you if for whatever reason, right? For whatever the reason. So so she's like, well, I mean, I just love what you're doing. I think it's amazing. I said, that's fantastic. Thank you for supporting it. But I just, could for me, could you not? Because what I feel like you're doing is, and my, I had someone who did this to me before, they took my platform and when it didn't work out in their favor, they used it as a harpoon against me. And was like, you're not who you say you are online and you're not the gentleman you think you are all because of their experience. And I was like, yo, this is not happening to me again because you're wounded and hurt. So I say all that to say it didn't work out. (laughs) 
because that was what happened. Like what I told her was going to happen actually ended up happening. Because I, I told her, I said, listen, I don't think we're going to be a good fit. I think we, we shouldn't date anymore. And it was, she, I mean, she laid into me. One, I like to cuss. She was like, and you're not going to cuss around me because I'm a lady. And I was like, what do you mean I'm not going to cuss around you because you're a lady? I'm cussing. I'm not cussing at you, but I don't know how that even works. Why is that even a thing? Who, I don't even, there's no handbook for this. So there's that. And then the other thing that happened was like not, I, was, I wasn't giving her the correct body language when I ran into a female friend who was there with her boyfriend. We were at Disneyland. I ran into a female friend who was there with her boyfriend. And because the boyfriend and I were having a conversation and my, my energy was towards him and she was here, apparently my body language was shutting her out because my shoulder was turned in uh, away from her. I say all that to say, the second a woman is greeting me with, hey, cowboy, hey, Mr. New Age gents, I am completely and utterly already like, no. Because you're not leaving any room. You've already showed me you're not leaving any room. They've reduced for you Brandon. what they see you as. They've given you a nickname that you yep. like ask for and that, that you don't feel like you've earned in that or, uh, or that you deserve in that negative. Right. Aspect. Of course, that makes absolute sense. Um, if a may, you didn't there. The only thing that you said that that caught me is now that may be someone who's hyper sensitive to it and hyper aware of it. But that is something that I still am aware of to this day thinking about when I'm, when I'm, so when we're out, we go like, say, say we're on tour. When we go out with the cast, I don't see my wife all night. We don't hang out together with other people. We split off and we're like, da, 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 and we pop around and see everybody and like take our time. I don't see her for hours. But I always make sure that I'm aware of where she is. I always make sure of those things. And I think that there is something to be said for had that person been something different to you, you may have been aware that your shoulder was closed off. Now, yes, that's a very specific thing. However, I, I'm, I'm, I mean it when I say I ran into uh, one of my, like, uh, to my first love, as it were. Um, when I was with Angelina early on, ran into her at a bar and this girl, I had just started dating Ange, this girl ran up to me, jumped on me, wrapped her legs around me and was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're here, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I didn't think anything of it because I was like, she's fucking, this is her, this is what she, okay, hi. And her boyfriend was there and it was like just a very normal thing. We left and Ange was obviously upset. And, and we had a discussion about it. And I, at the time, didn't understand. And obviously looking back, I mean, both of your faces just now were like, what? Like, <laughs> you let that, no, that's cool. No, I saw a uh, rebuttal, like, what the fuck? But at the time I didn't, I didn't see it clearly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. in that moment, asked, yeah. There may be something to the fact that yes, you are engaged with him. And there are many a time where I will fully, I'll be with you and I'll be fully engaged with you. And Andrew will be doing something else. And I'm, I have a general. No I, clue. Yeah. I, it's like a general idea of where she is in the house, but sometimes she'll just pop up on this side of the screen. And I'm like, holy shit. Like what just happened? Like that's totally understandable, but that's also forgivable. Um, within a certain realm, I think paying attention to body language is super important, but I think there's a reason that you didn't. What I really wanted to get back to after all of this was the door that was open of why I do not remember that it was Valentine's Day. And that is because Maya's birthday is February 13th. Mm. Maya, my little fucking Maya bear is turning 11 this year. Mm -hmm. what we were yeah. we were not you know, we were not 
together when I got what well, we had, we had just gotten together when I got Maya and I just called Andrew and was like, Hey, come over to the house. You come, come to my apartment. You should I have a surprise. And she walked in and there's Maya's fucking puppy fit in the palm of my hand puppy, just like wandering around the house. She was like, do you know what you're doing? I was like, no. And she tells the story all the time. She got so, I was like, absolutely not. I just, I just want a friend. I want my, I want I want my dog that goes everywhere with me. And I got so much more than I bargained for because I mean, fuck me. She looked at me and, and she's told this story about, she goes, I was so furious with you because I could tell you had no fucking clue what you were doing. And I called her not, not three days later, like in shambles being like, she's shit everywhere. It's everywhere. It's, it's on the walls. I don't, she's covered in shit. What do I, I covered y'all. I had a like 400 square foot apartment in New York city next to Madison square garden, right? 30th and ninth. She was at 37th and ninth. That's a whole other thing. Check the link. Um, I had in my kitchen, I had blocked mile off and I had paid oh my God. My kitchen down with people uh. and gone to the show because we were doing West side and I came back and she had not only shit everywhere because she had <laughs> diarrhea, which I didn't know was a thing. PS, PSA, it's a thing. She had not only shit everywhere, but then ripped up all the pee pads. And so there's shit and paper and she's covered in shit and paper. And I just called Ange and I'm not gonna fucking lie to you. I was in tears. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I need help. And she was like, oh my God. I just want to breathe. I just want to breathe. I just want to breathe. She came down there and she was like, okay, this is what you fucking wash her. I will clean this up, do this. Then she walked me through these things. And that little bear has grown up into this thing that is my co-pilot and a 2200 mile drive in a Jeep that has 132,000 miles on it. That has never given us a fucking problem as we have driven back and forth across this fucking great country of ours five or six times. Like that little girl puts her head on my shoulder and nuzzles into me. Cause she's like, dad, 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 let me drive. I'm like, Go back to I'm pulling a trailer for the first time in my life through a snowstorm. Go to bed. Today's not the day. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Because her birthday is the day before that. And that is very, very much more important. That is the only thing I'm thinking about. And her birthday is going to be fucking awesome. It's a unicorn thing. It's a whole thing. I love how you whispered. This is amazing. <laughs> I don't want this to be maybe my favorite part of the fucking episode <laughs> is you talking about Maya. This may be my favorite part, hands down. You lit up, dude. I mean, you're a dad. I love asking. Yeah. All of my heart, more than I ever thought that uh, I could. She definitely. If you if you want to know about love, you can check out part of love. Uh, you can check out New Age Gents. You can check out the Refinery, or you can you can get a dog. Get a dog. And watch how they look at you. Once you show them love, once you show them love, watch how they look at you. Ah, uh, Colt, fuck Any you, time. sorry, damn it. I don't wanna get emotional. Fuck. We've been talking, I mean, we've been talking with Frankie the Frenchie, talking with Baron Austin, we yep. got Maya and Missy. They changed our lives. They absolutely, I, again, uh, second time I challenge And it. that's the other thing. If you cannot come in here and love with my boys, you, ma'am, ma'am, it is an automatic no thank you. Hands down, biggest turn off. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. I've seen people do this and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, love 
I'm what? petting your dogs. That's not Great. petting my fucking dogs. Hi, hi, Austin. Okay, 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 it's, okay, okay. okay. Mm-mm. Is he gonna stop? <laughs> okay. I'm like, no, he, he, no, he knows you're not into it. So now he's gonna be extra dickish because you're not into it. He's gonna get it. So the reason this is hitting harder, and John, I feel like Colt and I hijacked the shit out of this one, but I love you. I apologize. Uh, I fucking love you. you um, um, I keep getting DMs about Bear, and I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know. You can cut this out of the episode if you want to, but I just don't know if he's going to make it through this year. So I'm like, why are you all sending me these DMs about? Because he's 12. He's going to be 13. He's not walking the same. He takes longer to get out of bed. He takes longer to do everything. He trips over himself here and there. I have to help him to the truck. Like it's a full fucking blown thing that every day is like, I'm on the brink of pull it together. And so as you're talking about this love you have with Maya, all I can think about is just like, oh, fuck, fuck. I was like, what am I going to do? Am I going to get him cremated? Am I going to do this? Like, what? Like, what? I can't bury him in because I don't own this house. Like, and, and the, the person who trained him is the one who reached out recently and was like, hey, I was thinking about you and Bear, and I don't know why. And I was like, it's a little, it's a little nerve wracking because the same way I felt about getting Smokey Joe and knowing it was going to happen, I feel the same way of like, I don't think he's going to make it to Christmas. Like, I just don't think he'll make it to Christmas. So that's why I'm like, oh, man, this whole Maya thing, it's, it's, it's a roundabout way of like, this is something that's been going on for the last two and a half, three weeks of like running through my head constantly is, fuck, he's not going to ever, he'll never be the same dog. Austin can get hurt and he'll be the same dog. Bear is old. You can't reverse age, mm-hmm. right? You can beat cancer, you can lose a leg, you can go blind and still have life to live, but you cannot beat age. That's what we're fighting against. We're fighting against time. And I'm, it's, a, it's a battle I'm not gonna fucking win. But you don't know when you're gonna lose it. Mm-hmm. I think that's more important. Yeah. You yeah. Sure we, you know. Yeah, I would, I would focus more on the fact that you have no control over that. So focusing on what you're going to do after may not, I understand, I understand it. I don't know Mm -hmm. that it's the most uh, pertinent information to be flowing through your head. Sure. Um, I think I acknowledge it to a certain degree, but uh, I'll tell you something I told Ange quite a few times because Missy's uh, 14 and a half um, and she <laughs> fucking monster and a half. Now granted, mm-hmm. a little dog and I know that Bear's a big dog, um, but Exception proves the rule for one thing. And in a, in a much larger way, I don't know what's going to happen today, tomorrow. I don't know that the world's not, and, and I know this may seem dark, but I promise it's born from light. I don't know that we're not all going to die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. I know that I love my girls. I love my family. And that I have no control over what happens next. And I'm just going to fucking enjoy it and ride it out. And there's going to be waves where you're watching them not be able to see, watching them not be able to be the same that they were, but that was neither here nor there. That's what we did when we said, yes, I will take care of you. Took responsibility for their whole life, not just until it was fucking comfortable and easy. And so 
I would, I would hope for his sake. You take a little time to just, just be there. Just enjoy those moments. Just ride it out. Because you don't know what's happening. If there's one thing we do know, it's that we don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean to bring that down, but within that, I, I hope I hope that at some point off camera that that brings you up a little bit when you're when you're watching him and he's maybe just laying with you. Maybe that's just an extra moment for just the two of you. Mm -hmm. It's not a moment he's not out there with Austin. It's the moment that you got something special. There's something to that. I appreciate that. These calls are fucking fantastic. I love them. You can't beat them. You can't beat them. Thank you, John Gorski. You I mean, if you can't beat them, join them. And I hope that this is a call sometime down the road that gets repeated. I mean, the refinery calls are fucking great. And if you can't beat them, join them. Join them. Get on a fucking refinery call. Take your own. Yeah, hold on now. Hold on. There you go. Hold on now. <laughs> he's going for it, too. Oh, he's you the heading best. back to the stables? Huh? Are you heading back to the stables tonight? No, not tonight. I got to help a friend move. Truck, truck life. Helping a friend move some stuff. And that's what I'll be doing tonight. So... Every fucking F-150 or Raptor I saw on the road, or Ram, because I think you have a Ram. I was uh, like, yeah. like yeah. truck life, bro. Truck I, life, yeah. man. That's it. That's, why they're on That's the road. it. Storm. Just helping somebody move. Gorski, for you, do you think, do you, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to do you want to create that relationship for yourself this year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Easy, easy, yes. I love that. There's something in the air, boys. There's something in the air. I tell you. It's happening. I tell you. It's a good thing. And dads. Uh, I know we're wrapping up here, but Gorski, I, I was curious when I, because I, I, I sent you guys a message about my dad, but how are things with you and yours? Yeah. Good. I mean, it's an interesting relationship, <clears throat> working on it. It's interesting that you brought it up because it's been like the last three days. I've been like, I need to build that connection, build that, that uh, friendship some more. So working on it. I love that word. And that's a hard thing. That's, I feel like there's this line that's kind of drawn in the sand with regards to dads that at, after a certain age, you're like, well, no, I either know my dad or I don't. I either right. Have a relationship or I don't. My dad right. for years, uh, it, it took a while because we didn't talk for a, a long time, a lot of years. Um, and he started calling uh, when my stepmom passed and, um, I kind of let that happen in through that. Um, and I went and saw her and that's a whole other thing. And, uh, when she passed, um, some things that transpired and he ended up coming to our wedding. And that was this very huge moment that I'm very, very thankful for because even after that, I still was like, I love, I love you so much, but I, I, I can't, I can't trust this yet. And over the course of that, he became my friend. And I would say to people, he's the, he's one of my best friends. I don't know. And they're like, but he's your dad. Like, you know, you love him. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah, but like, He's more of a friend at this point. Like, I don't know how else to describe him yet. I haven't, I haven't come to that conclusion. And I think for a lot of us, what if, what if that was something that we allowed, just allowed ourselves to be 
open to that friendship first. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. It can be just look as again, you know, just like I said about Ange, like any decent relationship has to be based on that friendship, anything that's fruitful long-term. Um, yeah. So for, for any of our male viewers, um, or female viewers, fucking anybody who's having an issue with that, with a parent, look at them as friends first and see, see what they, what they offer. And just, just to throw that out there, just as a, a, a separate thought experiment. Um, because now I look at them and I'm like, shit, you've become at, at 35 years old, you fucking became a great dad. And I realized that you, you always had certain qualities of a fantastic fucking dad. And there were just other things that overshadowed it. Y'all always gotta fucking just bring it, bring it to this point. Don't you? Episode eleven, season two. Motherfucker Jones, come on now. <laughs>